welcome back to my channel. So as I mentioned in the previous vlog, we're gonna dive into some of my beadwork that I'm working on, some previous projects, some unfinished projects. And, uh, we're not gonna be doing uh, the distribution this weekend like we normally do. Uh, we will be um, just taking some time off until next week when we head to Tacoma for our, our big distribution. So I look forward to that and I'm definitely taking you guys along with me on that journey. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this is one of my current projects I'm working on is a pair of earrings. Uh, when I first started beading, I never really did anything, uh, any kind of earrings. It was particularly uh, medallions, lanyards, um, stuff that I would wear. But just recently, I was getting nonstop orders for earrings and figure uh, it's a good way to make some side money. So yeah, this is what they look like. Um, this is for a really good friend of mine, her mom, um, that I met through a basket weaving workshop. So I'm really excited to just finish these up. And then she also ordered another pair of these, but in red. So once these are done, I'm gonna get the red ones going. So here's some more of my unfinished projects. Um, a few years ago, I really started getting into um, peyote ropes, like peyote style beadwork. Uh, I'm not really, I don't know how to do flat peyote, but I can do it somewhat good. This is an example of a rope that I was working on that I didn't finish. Um, but yeah, so there's this. And then this is an unfinished medallion that I wanna hopefully finish up um, soon. I just haven't really got around to it, but uh, I just really loved the design and I figured this would really look good on a medallion. Um, just recently, I started taking an interest in Huichol style beadwork. Uh, this, for those who don't know, this style comes from Mexico. And uh, this was an attempted bracelet that I wanted to make for Mexican for Mexico's Independence Day. So here's the finished product of, uh, this is what a Huichol flower bracelet looks like. Um, this is the very first completed one that I've done so far. I definitely want to make more because I want to, um, I want to be able to know how to do them just second nature, you know? Eventually I want to be able to do the bigger, uh, flower necklaces and, uh, sets and such things like that. So, anyways, moving on. And, uh, as you remember from the previous vlog, this is my workstation, so please don't judge. Like I told you before, I cleaned this just recently and it does not take much effort, um, especially when I'm working on an order for things to get chaotic in here. But I will show you the best of what I what I can. So in this drawer, I like to keep some of my smaller stuff like my cabs. Uh, these are used for earrings, but I also like to use them for pop sockets and to make uh, the centers for rosaries. Um, I bought these hair pipe bones a while back. I haven't really used them since. I only used them for one real, a couple projects. Um, but I have not used them recently. Uh, here's some smaller beads that I purchased from Ally Express. I like to just try to keep everything in a, uh, this. Not much in here, here's some earring cards. Uh, I had some rhinestones that I was working with. Um, this is where I keep all my crimp beads, anything that I use for like wire or wire jewelry. This right here is where I keep all my rhinestone banding. It's a mess in here, but um, I know where pretty much everything is at with these drawers. And then right here at the bottom, I can't really... This is where I keep my jump rings, some earring posts, and some beaded beading jewelry or beading wire. Um, and this is just extra space in here. These are some um, abalone centers. Uh, these kind are can be used for earrings or for chokers. Um, I was I traded my cousin some supplies for these, and then I ended up gifting my sister a couple for her and her daughter. Um, let's see. Oh, I picked up a couple of packs of these. You can get these at Walmart. Just they'll you'll find them in the scrapbooking section. They make really good centers for hearts. That's actually what the hearts that I was heart earrings that I was working on just recently. That's what I use for these. I will show you my my bead collection. Okay, so I have like five or six different boxes of beads. This box right here is 
where I keep my main beads that I use for that I use the most for projects um, and I try to keep them in color order and then this box right here is where I like to keep all my silver lined seed beads all my nice shiny metallic ones I have a couple stray colors in here but for the most part this is where I keep all my metallic or silver lined beads this box is for my size 13 beads and I kept a couple gems and flowers in here as well. But for the most part, this is where I like to keep my size 13 beads. I don't really work with size 13s, but these were used for certain projects that I needed more detail with. And then this right here is the Holy Grail. This had to be the most expensive bead set that I ever bought so far in one, in one transaction. These are my size nine tri-cut beads bracelet in here um but yeah this cost me about 120 dollars for all these colors and then i also keep some gems in here that i was gifted by my friend um lucy smart Lowit. and then i got some other extra gems that i ordered from indigenous supplies uh, this is from indigenous supplies and they have horse size in here i have other kinds of gems um and then I bought some cabs. All my cabs I buy from Shelly Brown out of Bishop, California. She's really good. I love her stuff. Um, yeah, this is just an example. I think this was going to be a pop socket. I forgot what project this was for. Okay, so for those who don't know, I specialize medallions, earrings, lanyards, um, and I also make rosaries. So this is uh, an example of an acrylic rosary center. I had these custom made by John Perry. I'll leave his, um, I'll put his Instagram on the, in the video too, so you can follow him. He does really good work. He makes custom acrylic stuff like this. He's made molds for me. Um, he does engraving on um, metal. He does engraving on shot glasses, metal, stone, wood, whatever you got, whatever you want engraving on or cut, he can pretty much do it all. So I would definitely rec recommend him for any upcoming projects or gifts that you want um, custom made. So here's some examples of some rosaries that I had made. This one um, was Laker colors with a purple cross that I hand painted and I added the gems on there too. Um, and then these were made with eight millimeter round purple beads and size 11 gold seed beads. This one was one of my personal favorites I made. This is for one of my own, but from my personal collection. Uh, it says Mexico and uh, has the Mexican colors. This one was a holiday special that just never sold. This one is uh, I made over Christmas, made with these nice red beads and clear beads. This one was nice too. This one never sold either. Um, this was a pink and, and gold rosary. This was an all black one with the rhinestones on it. Here is a blue cross Seahawks themed rosary. And where the Our Father beads are, there's these football beads. I have one in this 49ers as well. I just can't find it. And then this is an all blue one that I made as well. This one was just, um, this was freelance. No one bought this either. But this is another one of my collections. Or from this is another one from my collection. White pearl, or this is pearl, black, onyx, and uh, gold. And this isn't a rosary, but this one is one of my personal favorites. I made this. Um, I found all this stuff at Hobby Lobby. Literally, up almost 99% of the stuff that I, the materials that I made all these necklaces with. I found at Hobby Lobby. You'd be surprised, like, especially at what deals you can find your supplies at. Um, this isn't sponsored in any way, but Hobby Lobby, if you're listening to this, get at your boy because um, I love your store. I love everything that you guys have. So there's an example of that. Okay, so you've seen my collection. Uh, you see my projects I'm working on, projects that I need to work on, but this is not the end. I just talked with one of my very good beadwork friends. I will leave her her info in the 
in the video as well for you to follow her. Uh, my friend Robin is a really good beadwork artist too and we are collaborating. We will be working on a segment where we um, just talk more about history, culture. We'll also be talking about beadwork. You'll get to see us beading in action. You'll get to see all of that. So this for right now, this is uh, this is the conclusion of the beadwork segment on this vlog. All right, we're back. Uh, it is currently Friday afternoon. Uh, I just got off work right now, so I felt like uh, treating myself to a nice fancy lunch. So I'm here at the Water Fire restaurant. Uh, I've been here once around Christmas time. I really liked it. So. Uh, yeah, I decided just to come back and uh, give it another shot. I was supposed to pick up my mom in Seattle this, or not Seattle, Spokane this weekend. Uh, there was a change in plans. I guess she's going to be flying directly here to Yakima. So that saves me a trip. We're, we're going to make the most of the vlogging today. I'm getting hungry, so let's go in. just ordered my food right now. Um, the waitress just took my menu and I will check in with you once the food gets here. Yo, this is, I guess, the Wicked Prongs. This is my appetizer. This looks super good. I cannot wait to get into this. Alright, so this is the first bite. Mm. This is so good. Recommend this if you come to Water Fire. All right, this is my entree. I got the cedar grilled salmon with a side of asparagus and risotto. This looks really good. I've had this here before, and I can't wait to get into this. Okay, so this is what I have left. I'm gonna take it to go. It was that the prawns was super filling. Uh, definitely my favorite, my new favorite thing here. Definitely. Re um, just to rate the food, the Wicked Prawns, I definitely do that a 10 out of 10. The, present, the presentation was there, the taste was there, the spice that I love was there. So, yeah. The salmon was pretty good, but it didn't compete with the prawns. I would give it um, maybe an 8 out of 10. Still good, but just, um, I like, I guess it was probably the spice of the Wicked Prawns that, that did it for me. Anyways, I'm just gonna wait for the waitress to bring me in my check in the box and we'll get going. Alright, that was a very, very exceptional lunch. Uh, hopefully, I will come back here again. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm just getting in my car. We're gonna head over to Hobby Lobby just to see what we can find to work with for some projects. And uh, See where we go from there. Okay, so we're on our way inside Lobby Lobby. See what we can find today. Okay, so I'm back home. Um, I did find this little, I think they're called cross bags. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I think we're gonna beat it. My One of my friends told me she was gonna show me like how she does it. So uh, this is one for one project. Hopefully I can get some good money off this. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just finishing working on an order that was past due. Um, just a simple pair of earrings. But eventually I want to start doing medallions again. I used to do medallions a lot years ago. But um, little by little, I got my little workstation set up. I like to watch Netflix while I bead. 